Okay, so this is going to be my video about my electric riding mower. So this part of my yard does not get mowed, but it's pretty good size. This home sits on a half acre lot, so I have a lot of grass to mow, and I have a lot of trees, and I have a lot of curves. So the mower that I ended up getting was a rear engine rider mower. Uh, and I bought a used one. Um, I don't know how old it is. It had a 12 horsepower engine on it. And the 12 horsepower engine was really loud. In fact, it had a bad muffler when I bought it. The guy included a brand new muffler that I put on it. And anyways, uh, my chief complaint with that mower was how loud that thing was. It was awful. So. I don't have that many things with big gas engines on them. I have a wood chipper and it's incredibly loud also. So with that in mind, uh, I mow around the edges of these trees and I mow around the edges of the lawn where I can't get with a riding mower. I'll mow those with an electric mower. And the other day I was mowing and I could tell with the electric I could actually hear the birds chirping over the sound of the electric motor. Um, that's really nice. And so I decided, you know what, I plan to live here a long time. Um, the most unpleasant thing about mowing the lawn was that dang noise coming off of that engine. So I ended up uh, doing a lot of research into it and ended up uh, deciding to replace the Briggs & Stratton 12 horsepower engine that was on it with a Mott Energy 1004 uh, electric motor. And originally I was planning on trying to power my mower using some 56 volt lithium batteries that power my little mower. Uh, there's two of them here on the wall. They're made by the Ego brand, and they're 56 volt, and they're sold at Home Depot. But basically, they would not be enough to power this lawnmower. Um, this is the mower. Now, this is after, of course, converting it to electric. So I'll show you how it works. Um, but before we do that, let's take a ride on my old mower, and you can see on the old gas powered engine and you can you can see why I wanted to change it out now we're back at this guy I only finished this in the last couple weeks I have a few things to take care of on it um, so now to run this thing I will unplug it from the charger down here I can take this cable set it up here out of the way hopefully that'll keep me from running it over um, and I have a spacer that I put across the top here to hold these doors open so, I, so they don't swing back and get me. Um, I leave it in neutral so I can just roll this guy out. So we can take a look at it. So one thing I do not need anymore is these. I keep a pair or two in here on a hook so that uh, so I don't damage my hearing with this thing. So. This is after the conversion. The main pieces has a big electric motor here on the back. That's this. This is a 48 volt module from a Chevy Volt car. It's maybe one sixth or one eighth, something like that, of the full battery on the car. So normally the thing is much bigger than this. I think eight times the size of this. Um, to so those are the main two pieces. Now you need to get energy to it and instead of just taking two giant wires and touching them together, which is obviously dangerous, 
You use a contactor. The contactor sits down underneath here. Um, I have a big red button here in case I crash into a tree or my son puts it in the pool. Um, and I have a power button down here where the ignition switch used to be. Now, the, the power button, what it does is it closes the leads on the contactor uh, on the coil and that closes, basically, it's a small switch that closes a big switch. And the big switch um, lets the 48 volts go from the lithium-ion battery to the motor. Um, there's also a fuse in there and there's a shunt in there which is used to measure the amps. Um, I have made a panel here which a friend of mine at work tells me is super ugly and it tells me the voltage right now. I charged it last night to about 48 so we're sitting at 47.9 volts. That'll drop when I start running around on the mower um, so I'll probably take a look at this panel as we ride around but we're going to just drive around a bit and then we'll run the blade. So first for driving around, I make sure it's in neutral, which it is. I push this button here. Now the motor is running. So we're pulling 10 amps. 10 amps just sitting there. I'll push the clutch in, put it in second gear. Boom, we're off to the races. So now we're cruising along in second gear. This is as loud as as it gets without the blade. Um, I can speed it up a little bit. Now we're rolling a little faster and we're pulling 15 amps. Okay, so I'm going to uh, come to a stop. My grass is really not very long, but I'm excited to make this video. So I'm going to mow in second gear, putting the blade on now. It's gonna be much louder with the blade on. back in the shed um, I'll just show you the steps I go through to charge it so I'm going to take this and I take this charge cable and we'll plug it in here I wanted to make sure that this is on the front of the mower where it's pretty easy to get to um, this is the panel I'm gonna have to shut the phone off I guess because I use the phone to control this this panel but the pieces that we're looking at here, um, this is a relay that just turns on and off the power to this so I can control it with my telephone via my sprinkler system. This is a voltage boosting circuit. It takes 19 and a half volts from this laptop power supply and bumps it up to 48 or whatever is required to push 
uh, I'm pushing one amp into the mower, which is a very slow charge rate, but I'm also not mowing but once a week, so I can take time to do that. So I'm going to shut this off for a second and summon the charging. I just dialed up three hours of charging with uh, my sprinkler system, so it will run this unit for three hours. Right now it's set with a target of 48 volts, which is okay, and one amp is my target. So I'm only charging this thing literally with about 50 watts, which is why it takes so long to charge. But I'm okay with that because nothing here gets hot. Nothing's pushed very hard. When I push this button, it will begin to arrange the voltage that it needs to push one amp into that into that battery. So now looking at the battery, you see it seemed to lose quite a bit while I was mowing. However, um, this thing is now registering 47.61 after I shut it off. The voltage came back up quite a bit. So at 47.3 or something like that. So uh, it didn't pull out as much as the gauge reads. I'm not sure why that is. Um, anyways, so I'll charge it. I think I haven't done it yet, but I think if I mow my whole lawn, I think it'll take maybe 15 hours to charge, but I'll have seven days during which I could charge it. Anyways, that's it. Uh, thank you for watching.